we should not believe that while children and adults who are living in long-term conflicts that are dying from lack of access to safe water and sanitation, other people are not doing everything they can to find solutions. This was the case on the occasion of the 24th Global Wash Cluster meeting in Geneva. From the 17th to the 21st of June, when more than 120 experts in the water sanitation and hygiene sector and 15 of the world's most influential emergency directors gathered to work together on solutions. The challenge was daunting. On the one hand, to acknowledge the weaknesses of the sector in responding to the daily demands of ensuring access to safe water and sanitation services. On the other hand, to convince the emergency directors to redouble their efforts to provide a timely and appropriate humanitarian wash response in the face of new challenges. What we see is the reactivity and the predictability is not anymore there. The question is, how can we be more predictable? In conflicts, more children die from lack of access to safe water than from bullets. The first two days were devoted to understanding the seriousness of the problem through sharing concrete experiences in Yemen, Bangladesh and Syria. In Yemen it's the national organisations that are some of our strongest in terms of flexibility, response times and even programme design and engaging with communities. Uh, the government are doing more than 60% of the WASH response with the support of UNICEF also some of the most timely actors. We have a lot of tools, we have a lot of things, but I think that basically very few people are really aware of them and we don't use them in an appropriate manner. Then participants worked intensively on identifying some innovative humanitarian recommendations to strengthen WASH sector response capacities in conflicts and natural disasters, as well as other concerns such as the increasing length and complexities of crises, urbanization, the displacement of growing populations, in particular those caused by global warming and population growth. WASH stakeholders even endorsed the idea of an emblem that would symbolise the sector's campaign for strengthening the humanitarian response for service provision and ensuring the right of access to water and the respect of dignity. We hope with this emblem to be able to, uh, to qualify better our, our response to give more visibility to the wash sector. You know the wash sector is strongly underfunded, especially in emergency. It's funded around 4.5% of the global humanitarian fund. It's not enough. On the third day, the sector presented five major recommendations to the 15 emergency directors. Representing UNICEF, ICRC, Médecins Sans Frontières, UNHCR, IFRC, Oxfam, Save the Children, Action Contre la Fin, to name but a few, were then invited to discuss the recommendations and finally to endorse them as a progressive way forward. The five recommendations are as follows. 1. Reposition WASH as core to survival and protection. Create and implement a transformative capacity development plan. Give priority to preparedness and surge at all levels for WASH. WASH sector to engage in the broader discussion on reshaping the humanitarian fragile state's financing, designing humanitarian WASH with a long-term perspective. To the great relief of the global WASH cluster, the recommendations were endorsed almost without reservation, a step that pleased all the participants. I like the ideas of, of recommendation <coughs> as such, but immediately the question comes to me, to who do we recommend this? To the world? And then who has to act upon that? Who is responsible? The Mozambique crisis was one of those situations where we really tried to step up our disability work and understanding of what actually it is to be a disabled person in the middle of an emergency crisis, but also obviously what does it mean to be a girl or what does it mean to be a woman? I hope you remember this Global Wash Cluster meeting as the starting point of the rebirth of the wash. And it's also in that plan would be how to stop it, this becoming a wash kind of um, capacity building silo. How do we clearly articulate the linkages to all the other sectors? I think many of the problems they've been struggling with 
and not necessarily well known to people outside the immediate wash sector. So really good to have visibility of those problems. And I was also very encouraged that there was a lot of discussion around how the wash sector can collaborate more with other parts of the system, but also beyond the system, whether it's local authorities, municipal authorities, private sector. And in that, I think there's a lot of opportunity. And I think there's a lot of creativity there. I think there's a lot of desire to make really big change and to be ambitious and to see the whole uh, wash cluster and the whole issue of water uh, and sanitation and hygiene in humanitarian aid really you know, expand to where it needs to go because there's such a big need in the world today. And it's only with this kind of meetings where everyone's being very collegiate and collaborative and creative that we can make the kind of changes we need to make. For us, the emergency directors should know that uh, you know, the world is facing a severe environmental uh, crisis. WASH is at the forefront. They're dealing with a lot of complex and difficult issues, and they need support. We're not talking about the same operations as the 90s. The world has changed.